Hi, I'm Ian Weiskel, and in this video we're going to talk about breathing on the oboe. A lot of oboists and oboe teachers don't talk about breathing that much, and that's because it doesn't take very much air to play the oboe. I'm sure you've noticed, especially when sitting next to flute players and ensembles, that for every two or three or four breaths that they take, we may only need to take one because the air leaves the reed at such a low rate, such a slow rate. First, some basics. As you might already know, it is the diaphragm that controls breathing. It is a sheath of muscle that lives below your lungs. There are no muscles in your lungs themselves, and we can't actually feel the diaphragm moving. We just sort of control it indirectly. A fun thing about diaphragm and about breathing in general is that the diaphragm controls the pressure within the lungs. When the diaphragm moves down, it creates a negative pressure which causes air to come into the body. When the diaphragm moves up, it causes a positive pressure which makes the air leave the body. That's the principal difference between inhalation and exhalation. It's the difference in pressure inside our body compared to outside our body. It's important to remember this because breathing should be as relaxed and natural as possible when playing the oboe. It should feel ideally just as relaxed as it does when you're sitting on the couch watching TV. One way to feel the expansion of your torso as you breathe is to put two hands on your body, one up here just under your neck and the other one on your stomach. I'll show you that when I breathe I will, I will see and feel my lower hand moving, and the upper hand will not move very much. I'm making a little bit of noise so that you can hear when I'm inhaling and exhaling. Another way you can check this is by putting your hands sort of backwards and feeling your lower ribs on your back, sort of like this again. You might even feel more action there in your back than you do in the front at your abdomen. That's because when you breathe, your thoracic cavity is expanding all the way around your body. It's a cylinder. It doesn't just happen in front. It doesn't just happen in back. It happens all the way around the middle of your body. If you have your hands backwards over the backs of your ribs and you cough, you'll be able to feel the contracting and activity of the muscles between your ribs. You can also feel it if you put your hands the other way at the bottom of your front ribs. <coughs> you can feel that contraction of those muscles and then importantly you'll feel their relaxation afterwards. It is not necessary to maintain that kind of pressure all the time while playing the oboe. You noticed before that I mentioned that I added extra breathing noise so that you could hear it on the video when I was inhaling and exhaling. Ideally, you want both of those processes to be as quiet as possible. This is because if you hear something, that means there's something in the way. We can get things in the way all the way from our lips, to our teeth, to our tongue, the front, middle, back of the tongue, to our soft palate, to our glottis, which is around here, to our pharynx, which is down here and all the way back up. And here's how that might sound. Here are some examples of sounds you might hear while breathing. Or that sort of thing. If you hear any of those sounds, any range of those sounds on the way in or out, that means there's something in the way of the air getting into or leaving your body, and you want to eliminate that tension, eliminate that obstacle of the air. Okay, now for some tips. Because it takes so little air to play the oboe, the most important thing I can tell you today is that you may not need to breathe as much or as deeply as you're currently playing. We've all experienced on the oboe that sensation of sort of choking on the remaining air that's in our lungs, not being able to get rid of the built-up carbon dioxide that's in our lungs. An easy way to avoid that is to breathe less to start with. We need a remarkably little amount of air to play the oboe. In fact, 
One of my favorite examples of this is in Tchaikovsky's fourth symphony, the second movement slow solo. This solo has famously or infamously only one place to breathe. Because of that, I like to breathe very little, if at all, at the beginning of the solo. And that way when I get to that middle section, I have some time to breathe in fully like this. Another tip is to breathe out and to breathe out more fully. You may have heard from a teacher about planning your breaths. This usually means, from an oboist's perspective, planning places in music where we might want to only breathe in and, crucially, places we'll want to only breathe out. Normally we'll actually do it in the opposite order. We'll breathe out a little bit and then breathe in a little bit in order to increase the overall length of the phrase before we need to do a full breath, which is breathing out and breathing in. An example I have is uh, at the very beginning of the Fairling Fifth Study, Etude number five. This is in G major. Right in measure three, I pair a little out breath with a little in breath so that I can comfortably make it to the end of that eight bar phrase. Sounds like this. Sometimes it's helpful to practice just that out breath part if you're not comfortable doing it. Another breathing tip on the oboe is to breathe before you breathe. By this, I mean we can take a series of relaxed inhalations and releases of air, cycles of respiration, before we have to play a long solo. This will load our bloodstream with extra oxygen and make it a little easier to get through that long passage. One thing I've stressed throughout this video is the idea of a relaxed inhalation and a releasing exhalation. This is because when we breathe in quickly, you might recognize this sound. <gasps> it sounds like I'm surprised, or even more like I'm scared. And if you make that sort of breath, that quick in-breath, it actually tells your brain that you're maybe in a dangerous situation, and maybe you should be prepared to run. Does that sound familiar? Like fight or flight? Like getting nervous? If you breathe too quickly, you will make yourself nervous. I'll show you an example of even just the sound of a nervous breath versus a relaxed inhalation. Versus. That second one may have sounded better, but it definitely felt better to me. The last tip I can give you, if you really need to be able to hold out your ear for a long time or if you feel like your natural lung capacity just isn't that big, is to practice holding out long notes. And you can time yourself to keep track of your progress. So one thing that I like to do is to just hold a comfortable note somewhere in the middle of the oboe about mezzo forte after taking a nice, relaxed, deep breath. Turn on a timer. And then, rather than thinking about seconds, think about one, two, three. In other words, artificially long seconds. You might find the time you get to 20 or 30, you've actually held up that note for about a minute. And there are very few solos on the oboe that require a full minute of playing before breathing. That was about a minute. I probably could have held it out a little bit longer if I absolutely needed to, but this is just a video.
This video is not supposed to be an exhaustive discussion of breathing. You might have many more questions that you might want to ask your teacher about, although of course I'm happy to answer any questions that you put in the comments below. I hope you found this helpful and that you click subscribe for more content like this.